here you are, finally. Thank heaven. Desiree, do you realize how late you are? Where were you? I'll catch up. Your brother and sister and I have been very concerned about you. I went for a walk. A walk? In the park. Are you trying to say that you took a walk through the park? Desiree, it's bad manners to crumble your bread. A walk in the park at this hour, but that's foolish. Anything might happen to a young girl alone. Oh, I wasn't alone. I was with a young man. Yes, a young man. He came into our shop just before closing time. He wanted to look at some soap. You walked about the town with this complete stranger? He's not a complete stranger. He introduced himself. Finish your soup, Desiree. It's cold enough already. But that's scandalous. Someone you met at the shop? I still have my virtue, Julie, honestly. You are impossible. Although he did hold my elbow. I'm ashamed of you. Who tells her about these things, Marie? It's not proper. This is not the way to behave. You're no longer a child. That's the first time anyone in this house has admitted that I'm no longer a child. And you needn't be so unpleasant. I did it all for you. For me? Mm, I told him all about you, how beautiful you are and how bright. It was only half a lie. Very clever of you, Daisy Ray. It's time Julie met some young men. Yes, and it would be so much easier for all of us if she had a husband. Marie, will you kindly clear the table? He's from Corsica, the young man, a refugee. Refugee, indeed. Adventurer is more likely. It is very dangerous in these times to assume... Oh, Adrian, not again. It's been five years since the revolution. But we don't know what this young man is about. I told you he was about some silk. Anyway, what I've been wanting to say is that I've invited them to visit us tomorrow. To visit us? Them? He has a brother. He told me all about him. Two adventurers. It's disgraceful. They live in Marseille. The brother is visiting. You will have to cancel that invitation. But his brother is a general. Even generals are suspect in these days. But I've never seen a real general close up. Sometimes... Yes, sometimes. Sometimes my family makes me sick. to accept one fact. Since Papa died, I am the head of the family and I... It really is not an upright thing to cancel an invitation. Is he handsome? The one for me? Oh, very handsome by daylight, but I've not yet seen him by moonlight. These adventurers, do they have a name? Uh, Bonaparte or Bonaparte, something like that. Bonaparte, what an impossible oh. name. Madame? Good evening. Buonaparte, sir. Joseph Buonaparte. We were very happy you were able to accept my sister's invitation. Thank you, sir. My brother, Napoleone. We were also glad that you could come, Citizen General. It was not difficult. I had nowhere else to go. Uh, my, uh, my brother means, of course, that no one else had been kind enough to invite... What I mean is that after hearing Joseph tell of your charming daughters, I could have gone nowhere else, Madame Clary. Yes. Sh shall we uh, be seated? Thank you. Citizen General. Thank you. We shall have some wine presently. Well, you, you have a lovely garden. It's early yet, but when the lilacs are out and the climbing roses round the summer house, that is, the roses are out now, but in the autumn, the lilacs. Your brother is very young to be a general, that is. Not necessarily, madame. Lafayette was a general at 20. Has your brother been a general long? Since last year, when he commanded the troops that drove the English out of Toulon. Toulon, that is, mademoiselle. I'm sure you've heard of it, have you not? Oh, sometimes my ignorance is beyond belief. Would it be indiscreet, Citizen General, to inquire whether or not you're in our city on official business? I have no command at present. But I shortly expect to be in charge of the Italian campaign. Italian? But we're not at war with Italy. It's my own personal idea. I've made it known to Robespierre. Is it true that Robespierre has forbidden dancing in the streets and has closed all the houses of pleasure in Paris? Yes, you're right. Please forgive my sister. Sometimes Your she does not realize... Your sister has the happy faculty of saying the first thing that comes into her mind. 
She's without guile, a quality almost unbelievable in a woman. Uh, Desiree does not drink wine yet. Why not? Wine is very helpful, very strengthening, please. Young girls do not need strengthening. If you will permit me one slight contradiction, madam, they often do. Yes, Citizen Clary, we must press on to offensive war in Italy. Offensive war? It is our sacred duty to instill into all the European peoples our great idea of liberty, equality and fraternity, and if necessary, with the help of cannon. And now, which one of you two ladies would be kind enough to show me your garden? You were staring at me in the parlor. What were you staring at? Your uniform. I didn't think a general could be so shabby. You must be very poor. I am, Desiree. Tell me, when do you think my brother and your sister will be married? Married? Yes, soon I trust. They're made for each other. I spoke to Joseph about it last night. But last night they had not even met. Last night you and I had not even met. And here we are, arm in arm, in a magic garden. Flowers blooming, music playing. We must hurry or we lose them. Exactly. Confess, you must have thought yesterday when you invited Joseph it would be a good idea for your sister to marry him. I thought nothing of the sort. You must never pretend with me, Desiree. Wait. We'd better give them a chance to get better acquainted before they betroth. I should like to know why you were so concerned about this marriage. Shh, I'll tell you. Your family is obviously very well to do, and I'm sure that your father left a considerable dowry for you and your sister. Do you mean your brother would want to marry Julie only for her dowry? How can you say that? She's a lovely girl. In many ways, she's almost as lovely as yourself. I'm sure that Joseph finds her delightful, and they will be very happy together. I'm going to tell Julie every word you said. Exactly. That's why I'm explaining it to you so carefully. You see, I want my family to be well settled. Joseph will be the first. The others will have to wait until after my Italian victories. And you think you can make people do just as you wish? That life will come out just as you plan it? Have you ever heard of destiny, Desiree? Desiree desired one. It's a beautiful name. It becomes you. I will probably kiss you before very long. And not for your dowry. They play the Marseillaise every night in the park. It's always the last number. Today that song is played throughout France. Tomorrow, it will be played throughout Europe. A ragged army marching on wooden shoes. And you do not believe in destiny. No one knows what's ahead. Strange most people say that. I know what's ahead. I'm one of the men who make history. <laughs> Love. When I'm afraid, I, I always try to love. You lied. Wine is not strengthening. I wish the night could have gone on and on and on.
are you doing? I'm starting the diary Papa gave me. At last I have something to write in it. Did he kiss you? Julie. Did yours kiss you? Please. A girl allows herself to be kissed only... Well, she allows... Up. Oh, you're still too young to understand these things. How can it happen so quickly? Are you having a daydream up there? Oak. What were you thinking about? I was thinking that life is really very simple. Life is never simple. I agree, being in love helps to make it less complicated. Well, this is a rather attractive piece. Oh, it's too brittle. This piece is better. See those gold threads woven through? That gives it vitality. It won't go to pieces like you. Vitality? You're a born silk merchant, Steve. Papa always said it was in my blood. This is for Julie's wedding gown. Quite unfashionable. We haven't sold a yard of that since the Revolution. Oh, but the ladies in Paris still dress The ladies in Paris are no longer ladies. Today, everything they wear is transparent. Oh, surely not everything. General Napoleon, you want to have a party? Yes. We went first to your barracks, sir, but they told us we could find you here. Well, what is it? Warrant for the arrest of Citizen General Bonaparte. Napoleon? This issued with the knowledge of Citizen Robespierre. I regret to inform you Citizen Robespierre was guillotined in Paris three days ago. I must go with them, please inform my family. But I don't know where they live. 17 Rue Pavillon. Even on a warm summer day, the uniform of a sergeant of the Republican Army should be fastened according to regulations. But where will they take you? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Wait for me. I'll be back. What have I said from the start? Adventurer. Well, this will be the end of him. considers the little packages. I hope you got them all. I did. The books, the wine, the cakes, and the underdrawers. Were they the right size? Almost. <laughs> what happened? They charged me with plotting against the government, but the men in the Ministry of Defense are gentlemen, and when they found they had no evidence against me, they ordered me to duty. I'm so glad you're free. I'm to report at once to the special mission of tracking down hidden royalists. Will it be dangerous? I'm an artillery expert. I'm not a policeman. It'll keep me away from the front. Bury me. Let me be forgotten. Well, you, you could ask for a discharge. Y you might join Etienne in the firm. Are you mad? Do you realize that I'm the best general in France? Do you seriously believe that I would sell ribbons in a silk shop? I didn't mean to offend you. Anyone there? Come in the house. Who's there? Who is it? It's me, General Bonaparte. It cannot be you. You're in prison. You'll get wet. Anyway, what are you doing here in the middle of the night in this weather? Napoleon. Be still. With whom are you talking? 
He's talking to me. General, you owe me an explanation. I will give you an explanation. I have the honor to request the hand of your sister in marriage. No, with all my strength, no. One born a party is quite enough in a family. Loom. Desiree, come in the house at once. Did you mean that, or were you just angry? About my hand? How could one help being angry? Your brother shouts at me like a loon, and you asked me to become a ribbon peddler. <laughs> Obviously, I meant it. I came here directly from prison with the express purpose of asking you to marry me. Will you marry me? Yes. Oh, yes. You'd better go in. No, it's lovely out here. I must go now. Say goodbye to my family. I'm leaving for Paris in the morning. To Paris? Yes, I must speak with the gentleman in the ministry. But you can't. If you go to Paris, you'll be disobeying your orders. And perhaps I'll be shot. Can you loan me some money? Why, well, I only have 98 francs in my bureau. 98 francs will do. Throw them down when you get upstairs. I'll go to Paris and convince them, and when I come back, we'll be married. Please. Please remember that I love you. Oh, Paul, let have you ever seen such silk? Oh, isn't this a lovely piece of material? Oh, dear. Well, this will make a beautiful gown, don't you think? I told you a hundred times our silk is not to be handled by any of you. Just because your brother Joseph married my sister is no reason why I have to put up with the entire Bonaparte family. Oh, it's not Bonaparte any longer. Yes, yes, I know. He changed it. Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, it is easier to pronounce. And frankly, I wish I'd never heard it. <laughs> the next time you write your brother, you can tell him that Desiree will not wait forever. She hasn't heard from him in months. Well, that's because he's having such a wonderful time in Paris. You know, he hobnobs with all the diplomats and politicians. And he spends most of his time in salons, like Madame Talion. All the famous people gather there. And they drink champagne all day long. And flirt with each other in the little room. Well, a man who spends his time in such a manner doesn't deserve to marry a girl like Desiree. Ouch! Desiree, where are you going? To Paris! Who is she? The Beauharnais. Josephine. Josephine? Yes. you wish, mademoiselle? Oh, I, I wish to go in. Have you an invitation? No, but I believe I know someone who may be in there. Are you a friend of Madame Tallien's? No, but... I... Well, if you have no escort, I cannot allow you to enter. Now, if you'll kindly... But I must go in. But I have told you, you cannot enter unless you are a personal friend or are with a gentleman. Ladies like you must keep to the Rue saint honore Now, if you don't mind... Oh! I'm very sorry, citizen. It was really my fault. Quite right. Oh, I beg your pardon, but I, I should like to belong to you. This is hardly the time or the place. No, I, I mean for a few moments only, until we get inside. You see, I must go in and I have no escort. Please forgive me, I, I shouldn't have bothered you. No bother. Whom shall I announce, General? Your name, citizeness? Desiree. And the rest of it? General Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte and citizeness Desiree. You found him yet? No. How 
did you know? What a surprise! What a pleasant surprise, General Bernard Dawson! I've just returned from the front, Madame Tully. And as always, my first pleasure is to join your magic circle. Oh, the soldier from the front is flattering. But I see you've already found a companion in Paris. Yes, by a happy chance. The moment Citizeness Desiree and I saw one another, we fell into each other's arms. Well, old friend or not, my dear, you're going to have to share him with us. Come along, I want to show you the most fantastic woman. <laughs> Waiter, my dear, a waiter. And now he's met our recognized lover. Oh, oh, no. oh, it is quite so low, my dear, that I. My little motto has been never be in a hurry. People will not stand for the bread shortage much longer. After all, they did not win a revolution for that. <laughs> Is he teaching you to speak Corsican, madame? <laughs> it's impossible for you to understand anything simple, Monsieur Talleyrand. I love Napoleon, and he loves me. Believe me, it's not your soul he loves, nor your body. It's your influence. Oh, come now, you forget yourself. Yes, I fear so, but I am carried away by the truth. Perhaps you do seek glory, my darling. But we won't begrudge him that, will we? The pursuit of glory creates only a great hero. Contempt of it creates a great man. Perhaps the pursuit of an extraordinary woman can create both. You're rapidly becoming an expert at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as well, everyone, a toast. A toast to General Napoleon Bonaparte and our beloved Josephine. May they be as happy married as they are single. <laughs> Please remember that I love you. Mademoiselle, what is it? Go. Come, I'll take you home. No, leave me alone. Put me down. <laughs> Drive along anywhere. Yes, sir. Back to Madame Talia's? No. Anywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Madame Tullion, I, I should apologize. I apologize. I'm not sorry for anything else. I threw champagne at her dress on purpose. Champagne leaves spots. She, she's far more beautiful than I am, a lady of the world. I must try not to cry so much. <laughs> I'll get your coat wet. Don't worry, tears don't leave spots. <laughs>
have been married. I believed in him as I never believed in another human being. And now, without a word, he just... It really doesn't have to be the end of everything. Oh, it does. It, it, it does. In the life of every woman, there is only one great love. It's so... How can you be that certain? He says so in all the novels. It must be true. I uh, really don't like discussing another man's affairs, but there is something you should know about General Bonaparte. Aside from his interest in Josephine, he was engaged for a long time to the daughter of a wealthy silk merchant oh. in Marseille. His brother's married to his sister. So you see, he wouldn't have married you in any case. His choice was between a bumpkin with a large dowry and a paramour with useful connections. Unfortunately, you have neither dowry nor connections. How do you know that? You can tell by looking at you. Perhaps that's why you're so attractive. There'll be no tobacco. Would you allow me to call on you tomorrow? Aren't you in love with her? Good heavens, who? Madame Tellio. No, I'm in love with you. Oh. I can't bear generals. None of you. Well, there are generals and generals. Again, would you allow me to call on you tomorrow? No. Perhaps I'm too old. I'm leaving Paris tomorrow for my... I'm, I'm leaving Paris tomorrow. And I'm never going to return. 13 Rue Tabac. Thank you. Truly, many thanks. Don't worry, I'll go in and stay. No, it's not that, it's just that... What I said just now, I was teasing, of course, in a way, but... You are the very most attractive... Oh, it wouldn't do, General, really not. It isn't that you're too old for me, but... You can see for yourself. I'm much too short for you. December 15th, 1797. I suppose by now the whole world knows Napoleon Bonaparte. His face is everywhere. They call him the strong man of France, ever since he conquered Italy, just as he said he would. And he certainly has taken care of his family. Whoever thought Joseph would be ambassador of the French Republic here in Rome. Anyway, I, I'm glad Julie asked me to come and stay with them. Marseille has too many memories. And who knows? Diplomatic life may be interesting. Diplomatic life is dull, dull, dull. And this gloomy palace these cold floors and high ceilings, and these awful statues. <laughs> At any moment, I expect them to turn into fountains spouting water from all sorts of unlikely places. And it's always so, so drafty. <laughs> One thing is certain. I hate palaces. You are glad you came to Paris with us, aren't you? Yes. You're quite sure you wanted to come to his dinner party? Yes. We'll be close by if... Well, now that he's married to Josephine, of course... I... Do you feel anything for him anymore? No. No. His Excellency and Madame Joseph Bonaparte and Mademoiselle Desiree Clary.
Julie. Madame. Joseph. Madame. Welcome to Malmaison, mademoiselle. It was good of you to have come. The delight is completely mine, madame. It's inconceivable. The little girl I once knew. Desiree, you've become a temptress. You've not seen me in a long time, General. Too long. Your success as our ambassador in Vienna has seen... I intend to stay in Paris as long as Joseph and Julie are here, General. And I shall see that they remain indefinitely. And in the tradition of the great French diplomats. Ah, oh, Bernadotte. You know my brother and his wife? And you seem to be acquainted with the young lady. No, I don't recall that I am. Joseph Julie, come and meet everybody. Well, allow me to present her then, Mademoiselle Clary, General Jean Baptiste Bernadotte. The British Isles can never be invaded with the sea. But there is another way. Now, can you imagine battalion after battalion transported across the channel by air? By air? Huge balloons constructed to remain aloft for hours, each carrying a half a dozen men. Inventors have shown me the designs, fantastic possibilities. All of this, of course, will have to wait. It is now safe to reveal something that Bernadotte and a few others already know. In a few weeks, I shall leave for the Egyptian campaign. We will sail from Toulon with 400 ships, and 2,000 pieces of artillery. <coughs> With the pyramids as a base, we will unite the East and the West. Forty centuries will look down upon us, and we will not disappoint them. What do you make of it, Bernadotte? Egypt. Oh, um, it will prove that cannon is more effective than bow and arrow. You misjudge my motives. Victory in Egypt is necessary. It is one more step in bringing order and peace to Europe. Order and peace by conquest. I'll tell you frankly, if I were Minister of Defense, I'd forbid you to sail. Well, then we must make certain that you are not made Minister of Defense, at least until after I depart. <laughs> General Bernadotte doesn't approve of conquest, not even of ladies. It must have been painful for you without one in Vienna. At court, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> at court. And elsewhere. <laughs> Perhaps you never found the right lady. I found her once, but she simply vanished. I drink to her memory. This one over here is called the Donna Velata. I've seen it somewhere. Yes, it used to hang in Italy, and I borrowed it. Her smile reminds me of your wife's. Your tone is cold. Did you expect it to be otherwise? I thought I'd done everything I could to make matters up to you. By sending me every eligible bachelor you knew. I chose only my most trusted aides, soldiers who had distinguished themselves in the field of battle. I'm not a decoration to be awarded to some deserving officer. It's time you were married. Believe me, only in marriage can a woman find the real meaning in life. I should like to throw these candlesticks at you. Well, if you must, at least let's not set fire to the place. Desiree, I must make you understand. Without Josephine, I could not have achieved command in Italy. As a result of that, deeds await me of which the present generation cannot even dream. These chuckleheads who call me bloodthirsty, mad, ambitious, I'm none of these. I am the French Revolution, and I shall know how to protect it. The crown of France is in disrepute. It lies in the gutter. It needs only to be picked up with the point of a sword. Do you understand that? Do you? I don't. I'm not certain. We must be friends always. The gardens are lovely here in Elmaison. There are chestnut trees and a lake with black and white swans and a charming little building. No, I, I don't want to walk in the garden with you again, ever.
Would you object, madame, if I invited your sister for a little drive? Well, of course, General, any afternoon. I meant right now. Yes, right now. But it's after dark. Only a little after dark, Judy. Merchant's daughter from Marseille. Why didn't you tell me? I was too proud. I was too confident. I called next day at the house on the Rue Tabac. They would tell me nothing about you. I asked them not to. And thereby caused us to waste three complete years. But I thought of you many times. Have I changed? You're more nourished. And I no longer hate Paris. It must be the loveliest place in the world. I never want to leave. All right. Except that I'll probably be in command of troops again soon. But I found a house which would be perfect for you and the child. What child? Our child, of course. Ordinarily, I'm a man of manners and protocol. I'd, I'd call on you and your family. I'd bring you flowers, take you to the theater. I'd, I'd do whatever is required of a man before he proposes. But Three years is enough time to waste. Oh, no, please. There's no help for it. You're the second man I've ever kissed. Do it again. I was born in a small city called Po in Gascony. My father was a clerk in a lawyer's office. I joined the army when I was 17. Not the second girl I've ever kissed. I don't mind, really. I, I'm not apologizing. One more statistic. Ever since the moment I left you that night in the Rue Tabac, I've been in love with you. I met him first. I loved him. You would always know that. You still love him? I haven't found out yet. I hope not. You think you could ever be in love with me? I think so. My sweet general of the bridge. Then we'd better risk the other. Perhaps it doesn't matter that I... No, I meant perhaps it doesn't matter that I'm too short for you. The trousseau's all ready. I embroidered the monograms long ago. Bees. But I didn't know they'd be for Bernadotte. Him, his face is crab red. He looks so offended. Perhaps it's because we named him Oscar. You can be sure I had nothing to say about it. It's a hideous name. It is a noble name. It belongs to a Nordic hero. May we join this happy occasion? Of course. We're honored. We've come to pay our compliments to the Bernadotte dynasty. How small he is. Well, they're always small at the beginning. Oh, I brought these for you. Oh, they're beautiful. They're from our gardens at Malmaison. Oh, lovely. I'll put them in a vase. Excuse me. May I come with you? Please. Darling. Come on. There we are. There's the baby. All right. Quiet. Oh, please. I hear that you're not pleased about my return from Egypt. The commander's places with his troops. 
I've returned to the place I was needed most. The situation here is desperate. Riots, corruption, political murders. The government won't last out the month. I've tried and tried to grow stems like these. I do envy you your roses. I envy you your son. Someday I hope he'll come to visit one of yours and Napoleon's. It's kind of you to hope that. But strange, isn't it? That with my first husband, I didn't really wish for children. And I had two quite quickly, before I was 20. In fact... I'm not speaking of leadership. What you suggest is dictatorship with you as the dictator. I tell you, it is up to us, Bernadotte, the generals of the army to save the Republic. What do you object to? Your methods? I see. Well, I must know who supports me and who does not. If force is finally to be used, where do you stand? If you came here to ask me to join you in treason, I must ask you to leave my house. Your husband is a very stubborn man. Write that on the 9th of November in the year 1799, Napoleon Bonaparte was proclaimed the first consul of the French Republic. But those who tried to walk out of the Chamber of Deputies in protest were turned back at the exits by the bayonets of Bonaparte's aides. If we're forced to flee, I could dress as a boy. <laughs> You've been reading novels again. Jeremy, have you heard? Joseph's to be foreign minister. And we're moving to the Tuileries. Josephine's going to do everything over. It's all so dingy and old-fashioned. Her apartment's to be in white. Imagine me, Julie Clary, in the Tuileries. <laughs> You're not still writing your diary. Oh. <laughs> Why funny? <laughs> because everything's so different. I, uh, <laughs> I have an order from the first consul. Oh. General Bernadotte is to report to him tomorrow oh. at 11. So very different. The nation has chosen me as its guardian. We've averted civil war. Bernadotte, I ask you to join my council of state. Why do you do this? Because France cannot afford to lose one of her most able men. Listen to me, Bernadotte. Listen to some of the things I plan. A unified code of laws. A bank of France. We need new roads and harbors. I will abolish all hereditary titles. All these things and more. A new program for the Republic. You are the last man of consequence to oppose it. I have never opposed the Republic. Then you accept. Well, I'm delighted. I'm delighted for yourself as well as for your wife. She was never one to lurk about in alleyways, pasting up inflammatory posters. And Bernadotte, if you choose to number yourself among my friends, well, you will be most welcome. I give you my loyalty. I cannot promise you affection. Oscar, it's time for your lunch. Daisy Ray, you're late already for the coronation rehearsal. The old dragon gets grouchier every year. Mama, will you have to wear his crown to bed? I don't know, dear. It may be too heavy for him. Not for Napoleon. Emperor of the French. Remember that night he came to visit us in Marseille? Would you ever have dreamed of them? No, but I'm sure he did. He always felt nothing was beyond him. Look, Mama, I'm a marshal of France, just like Papa. <laughs> Did you know that one was supposed to call a marshal my lord, even his wife? Well, I never hear you do it. Oh, I do. But only in our bedroom. Desiree. Behold, madame, the interior of Notre Dame, dressed for his majesty's coronation. Behold, if you please, his majesty. Lo, her majesty. The imperial orb, so, the scepter, thus, the sword of Charlemagne. You ladies, each a wife of a marshal of France, accordingly. Now, the organ peals, the procession begins, lightly, gracefully, and above all, joyously. Her Majesty starts so. The All High Sisters of His Gracious Majesty lift the train of Her Majesty's I robe. I told you I'm not going to carry the train. Nor I. If she can't pull it by herself, let her walk on her knees. Madame, I implore you. It is His Majesty's expressed wish. Not if he throws me out of France. But, Madame Bernadotte, 
We haven't seen you in some time. How is your family? Very well, Your Majesty. Your little boy, is he growing fast? Very fast, thank you, Your Majesty. Oh. What is it, Monsieur Dupre? Your Majesty, she is the Emperor's sister, but she is also the wife of a marshal. Well? Eighteen marshals' wives, nine pairs, side by side. But she is also to help carry Your Majesty's train. This leaves seventeen ladies only. And how can seventeen ladies form twos, none to walk by herself? Might I be of assistance in this difficult and strategic operation? You see, we will have only 16 marshals' wives in the procession. The extra one, the odd one, will carry one of Her Majesty's lace handkerchiefs on a pillow. Now, I think that'll be a very poetic touch. A stroke of genius, Your Majesty. Now, I think we should allow uh, Madame, uh, Madame Bernadotte responsibility of this. I think she will look lovely in sky blue. Sky blue isn't becoming to me. I haven't worn it in years. Yes, well. Proceed, I will watch. <laughs> Ladies, if you please. Your positions. Organist. So, Your Majesty, if I may be permitted. Now, ladies, we remember our positions as we rehearse them. So, Your Majesty, Madame, Her Majesty's train, I implore you. Madame Bernadotte, uh, your position, if you please. So, music. One and two and three and four and one. carry her train. Madame. We're made to do the job of Paige girl. You've heaped honors on everybody, and what are we? Your own sisters. Nothing. Well, what exactly do you wish to be? If you want to know, a princess. Yes, a princess. I thought I had treated my family with more distinction than they deserved. You are a marshal's wife. Your husband is in the Ministry of Finance, a fiddle player. You are the Countess Borges. Yes, you may be married the only man I knew with whom I wasn't the tiniest bit in love. Sire. I beg that in your graciousness you grant your sister's requests. So that we may get on with this rehearsal. Princesses of what? Of where? Very well, kneel. Now, each of you is an Imperial Highness, a princess. Now, will you kindly arise and carry the train, Your Majesty? about the virgins. What about them? None can be found at court. Well, why must we have them? It is your majesty's command that the coronation be modeled in every detail after the medieval ceremony at Reims. Thus, 12 virgins must walk to the altar after the anointing of the emperor. Gentlemen, this is your problem. I'm sure that there are at least 12 suitable young ladies left in France. In sky blue. Last week, the army even drafted the son of the coachman. Do you know how old he is? He is 15. What country will he die in? Bavaria? Spain? I tell you, they are taking boys of 15. I know, Marie. My nephew is at the Austrian front, my brother's only son. They marched him away with roses tied to his musket. Everything went wrong. <laughs> I can't find any virgin. And Josephine's crown was delivered late and doesn't fit properly. She and Napoleon are having a church wedding tonight. Pope and Juan, unless they do. They only had a civil ceremony before, you know. Well, what's this? It came for you this afternoon from the Imperial household. Oh. And I'm to have a special role. I don't dance in with all the other wives. I come in all alone carrying Josephine's handkerchief on a cushion. Isn't that quaint? Except that he's asked me to wear sky blue, which I detest. I don't care for you having a special role. He wishes it. What did you say? The Emperor wishes it. I can't very well do anything about it. The Emperor wishes it. Shh! 
Jean. Every time he sees you, the comedy, the opera, his receptions, now. But that's ridiculous. Do you realize how long it's been since he... I'm nothing but a memory to him. Yes. A memory he'd undoubtedly like to refresh. Madame la Maréchale, in Marseille, you were kind enough to lend me some of your savings so that I might travel to Paris. This journey has brought me good fortune. It is an obligation I take pleasure in, in meeting today. The amount involved at the time was, was 98 francs. Forget it's because I am part of his youth. I won't go to the coronation. I'll stay in bed with a cold. I'm seriously ill with a cold in the head and a sore throat. I cannot take part in the coronation ceremony. I love you very much. I'm not going to cry. these roses Josephine brought me. Even then, I think she knew what would happen. And later, I remember the way she looked at him at the coronation. Just five years back, almost to the day. Well, this is one of his affairs I won't attend. This time, I am staying in bed with a cold I don't have. For several years past, I've lost all hope of having children for my beloved wife, the Empress Josephine. Yet the political necessities of my monarchy require that I leave heirs to the throne on which Providence has placed me. The interests of France demand the dissolution of our marriage. I wish to state my marriage is an obstacle to the welfare of the nation. As I no longer expect to be able to, to fulfill my obligation. To fulfill my obligations, I am resigned to my lot. I owe everything to His Majesty's kindness. As occupant of the throne on which he placed me, I have received abundant testimony of the love and affection of the French people. It is with regard to these sentiments 
that I consent to the wishes of my august consul. You were the only one who stayed away. Perhaps I was the only one who knew how you really felt. It's wise and true. I wanted someone with me who knew how I really felt. I'm to leave in the morning. The workmen are coming to redecorate the rooms. You were the only one who stayed away. Her Majesty wishes to retire now. You can finish that in the morning. Not Her Majesty anymore. Please take the rest of this. It'll help you to sleep. Oh, I had so much already. You threw a glass of champagne at me once. I made you very unhappy. Forgive me. I didn't mean to. It's long ago and long since healed. You, you ought to tint your hair, Desiree, when you wash it. Just a little. Give it a reddish glow. It would be lovely. Yes, madame. It would be lovely. She's... She's only 18, you know. That, that Mary Louise. That Austrian princess he's marrying. She's a... She's a Habsburg. The Habsburgs are very prolific. She'll have no end of little princes. No end of little Habsburg Bonaparte. I, I must leave now, madame. It's... <clears throat> He always knew I couldn't have a child by him. I told him so. I even told him why. He always knew, Desiree. He... He always Don't desert him, Desiree. When he loses power, he'll need someone. Who's there? Oh, oh, me. Who's me? I was just leaving. Well, to begin with, what are you doing here? I wonder myself. Her Majesty sent for me. Oh. For consolation, I suppose. How very inventive of her to choose you. I always envied Josephina's sense of theatre. You are unkind, sire. She is truly heartbroken. Well, don't whistle so with pity. She leaves here with 700 dresses, 250 hats, 3 million francs a year. Has she been crying? Yes. Well, she would cry for several days and have a facial massage and go out and order 10 new gowns. If you'll just show me the way out of here. The door to the hall is there. Don't you want to put your shoes on first? Desiree. Citizeness Desiree. Tell me, how is that fine fellow your brother? He's been living here for some time. 
But there is now a Paris branch of Clarion Sun. Oh, yes, Clarion Sun. I remember you wanted me to go to work for him. Selling ribbons, I believe. Yes, Your Majesty. Well, we are quite different people now, aren't we? Or are we the same? If I may have my shoes, please. It's a pity you're married to Bernadotte. Well, to the future then. Marie Louise of Austria. Politically, she is very desirable. And there is a certain look of fertility about her. I don't approve of this marriage. I do not approve of your divorce, sire. I marry and divorce for France. And will you kindly stop calling me sire? This belonged to the last Austrian to inhabit these quarters, Marie Antoinette. The new Austrian will undoubtedly want to waltz. I never learned. Teach me. I cannot not hear. Here. And now. We are different. I will not try to kiss you again. Let us waltz. No. We will waltz. No, you, you have to keep on turning. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Two, three, two, three. are everywhere now, even in Spain. And my husband's been heaped with honors. Oscar likes best Denmark's Order of the Elephant. But Jean Baptiste treasures this one from Sweden. Since he's been wounded and sent home this last time, I've seen him look at it often with the most curious smile. <laughs> Desiree, wake up. What is Darling, it? wake up, hurry, put something around you. Why must I wake up? What is it, Papa? Is there a new war? You'll hear all about it, just hurry. There have been rumors for some time I didn't want to tell you. Tell Help me Madame Bernadotte a robe, anything. Do you understand? No, I don't understand a thing. As Chamberlain of His Majesty Charles XIII, I have the honor to report that the Swedish Parliament has unanimously elected Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte heir to the throne of Sweden. Heir? To the throne? King Charles wishes to adopt Marshal Bernadotte as his beloved son and receive him in Stockholm as Crown Prince. Oh, but, but that would mean that I'd be Crown Princess of Sweden. Yes, madame. And eventually Queen. Queen? But I don't know how to be a queen. We regret that you have not had time to become accustomed to the idea. We shall await your decision. I'll make it quickly. You gentlemen must have had a long and tiring journey. You must join us in a glass of wine. Oh, look, Papa. Three crowns and a lion. What a beautiful coat of arms. Uh, please, uh, tell me why Sweden chose my husband. Madame Bernadotte has not occupied herself with affairs of state, gentlemen. Madame. For a century now, the importance of Sweden as a great nation has been failing. Our present king is very old. He is childless. If he dies without an heir, there are certain forces within the nation that may provoke civil war. That happens 
our country may well disappear. We are an ancient state, madame. We want to survive. Oh, but my husband is not a Swede. Precisely. We need fresh blood. We need a man of stature that Europe respects. To be honest, we need a marshal of France. And Bernadotte is the only marshal who is not servile to Napoleon. But I have to learn Swedish, and I, I'm terrible at languages. As your Royal Highness, I trust it will be your Royal Highness. May I teach you your first Swedish word? Skål. 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 Submitted a remarkable request, Bernadotte. You wish to surrender your French citizenship and resign from the army. I can respect a man's desire to ascend the throne, but to change his nationality is strange and incomprehensible. My brother Joseph is king of Spain, yet he remains a French citizen. Louis is king of Holland, but he wouldn't thank anyone for calling him a Dutchman. Jerome of Westphalia, Marshal Mira, Caroline's husband, king of Naples. All rulers, yet all still Frenchmen. I'm quite sure, Madame Bernadotte, that you have given considerable thought to this matter. I have, sire. Do you know where Sweden is? The North Pole. Crown princes of icicle land, in more ways than one. Tell her, Talleyrand, something of Swedish court ceremony. It is very rigid, Madame. The Swedish royal house is extremely conventional. My feet hurt, sire. May I sit down? The Swedish royal house is also mad. The present king is incapable of pronouncing one coherent sentence. The one before him was opposed because he was insane. Really? Since I hope to join that monarchy, sire, I must ask you not to insult it. I request your decision. Your Majesty, England has been breaking our continental blockade through Sweden. <laughs> what a joke on the English. A French marshal on the Swedish throne. Very well, Bernadotte. Go to Sweden. But of course I cannot allow you to renounce your citizenship. It would be impossible. I will call upon you should the frontiers of France need defending. That will not become necessary since France no longer has any frontiers. His Majesty is suggesting that with you in Stockholm, the, um, shall we say, the interests of France and Sweden would always coincide. I should, of course, always serve the interests of Sweden. And the interests of France? I should serve the interests of my former country, whenever they do not conflict with the interests of Sweden. possibly be that you have forgotten what your former country meant to you? Can it be that you have forgotten the battlefields on which you fought and the armies which you led? Is it possible that you have forgotten the ideals of your youth? I remember the ideals of my youth, sire. There are times when I feel they have been betrayed. Go on. I've watched you juggle the thrones of Europe. I've seen you make kings and queens of your brothers and sisters. They rule uneasily. Their subjects despise them. I will not be a puppet to be moved at your pleasure. If I go to Sweden, it will be as the Swedish crown prince or not at all. Sweden may not possess the grandeur of Spain, the climate of Naples. It possesses something far richer, a free parliament. It has chosen me to rule it freely. I will govern according to my own ideas and those of my people. Will you remind him that he is a Frenchman and that his emperor has a right to command him? You were born to command, sire. I was not born to obey. You will remain a marshal of France. And when there are new wars, you will lead one of my armies. And furthermore, you will add your Swedish regiments to ours. Would you make me a greater man than yourself by obliging me to refuse a crown?
Madame, is this your wish? It is my wish, sire. Very well. I see you have your interests and I have mine. is where love Stockholm. It's a beautiful city. They call it the Venice of the North. I prefer the Venice of the South. I put on my woolen underdrawers and I'm still freezing. Don't worry, no one's going to look under my skirts. family requests that you stop sliding across the throne room with Oscar. Desiree, you must learn a little restraint. That is the most difficult thing of all. has suggested a few tutors. Tutors, Jean? I haven't been able to learn anything since I was ten. Oh, I'll try. I'll try. Lubenhaupt. 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 as Crown Princess of Sweden. Well, I don't know, Your Majesty. You don't know, my dear daughter? Well, I can't judge. I've never been a Crown Princess before. It is extremely unfortunate that you do not know. But I will tell you how a Crown Princess does not fulfill her duties. A Crown Princess does not fall asleep in public. At court function, she remains awake and converses graciously. She does not act as if she is deaf and dumb. 
I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but I keep still so as not to embarrass my husband. I sometimes say things which prove to be embarrassing. My crown princess does not allow her servants to call her by her name. Marie? But she's called me Desiree all my life. A crown princess does not wander through the streets alone inspecting the silk stores. And why not? I used to be in the business. I must insist that you forget what you used to be. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but I forget nothing and nobody. You will have to in the future. Your behavior is already one burden to the Swedish people. Do not permit your origin to become another. If I may leave now... No, my daughter, you may not. I am leaving, I... Your Majesty. I am leaving Sweden. May I announce you, Royal Highness? No, thank you. I'm accustomed to seeing my husband without being announced. Well, I'm obliged to announce you, Royal Highness. Who obliges you to? Tradition, Your Royal Highness, for centuries. Oh, don't fret. I won't upset your tradition much longer. Royal, Your Royal Highness. Royal Highness. Is there something particular, Desiree? Yes, I wish to speak to you. I'll wait until you've finished. Uh, question of uh, breaking off trade with England or defying Napoleon. There are no other choices. We must maintain peace with Napoleon. Napoleon's idea of peace is that no one should venture to oppose him. I will not allow him to dictate our trade policy. If your Royal Highness keep to that, there will be resistance. I hope you will consider your own position. I fully realize that I'm still on probation here in Sweden. You're a... Uh, uh... Gentlemen, I believe we'll continue this another time. Now, if you'll tell me what is so important that a Council of State must stop for it. I had a dreadful scene with the Queen. I was unspeakable. But so was she. Don't be angry with me, Jean-Baptiste. Please don't. How can I not be angry? Did you hear what we were discussing? Do you make any effort to know what goes on in the world? Napoleon has set on a new bloodbath for Europe. Someone must stop him somewhere, and you ask me to concern myself with a spat between you and the Queen. Well, whatever it's about, perhaps the Queen is right. I came to tell you that I'm leaving. I'm going home. You are home. I'm sorry, Desiree. I'm tired. I'm upset these days. Oscar in the front rank. Halt! Axel. Why do they always march into battle with music? Helps them to keep in step. He'll make a good soldier. Someday he'll make a good prince and a good king, like his father. Do you know what they call his mother? A foreigner. That is why I must return to France. I only embarrass you here. I lower your prestige more every day. Say that you will let me go, Jean. Do not ask me to say it. When your position here is stronger and the people accept you completely, I will come back. And when will that be? Not until Napoleon has stopped will there be any security for me, or peace for anyone. I cannot let you go. I cannot do without you. Oh, dearest, you cannot do with me. There's too much at stake. You know it. Why do you look at me like that? Because you're right. Because I love you. Because he will see you again.
it's spring in Paris. I'll go to our bridge. Look out at the Seine. And remember. you come. After all, it's an occasion. And you've been here eight months and living like a nun. School. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Desiree. The Emperor. that affairs of state kept me from joining you until now. And I asked my son to be with us here on this eve of a great year for France. To the health of his young majesty. To the health of his young majesty. That's for you. <laughs> He's damp. I heard that your royal highness returned to France some time ago. May I ask what caused you to leave your own country? The cold, sire. So, the cold. Members of visiting royal houses usually request an audience when they visit my capital. Court courtesy. I did not think your majesty overly concerned himself with matters of courtesy. You were, madame. Since you are no longer a citizen, you remain in France because of my courtesy. I was taught well, Your Royal Highness. That must be the real reason why she left Sweden. Yes. She's still in love with him. He's still in love with her, I'm sure of it. Oh, my brother, in his affairs, he's such a fool. When do you plan to return to Stockholm, madame? When it is no longer cold there, sir. Do you not miss your son? Only a little less than I miss his father. In the meantime, your husband is playing a dangerous game. Reports reach me that Sweden is discussing an alliance with Russia. Now, how true is this? I only know that Sweden wishes to remain at peace. Impossible. The time has come for choosing sides. Do you realize that in a few days I will send the greatest army of all time to Russia? And after Russia, England, urge your husband to win our friendship, not our enmity, for your own sake. I'm sorry, but I know nothing about politics. You would do well to take me seriously. You forget. I was the first person who ever took you seriously. You've developed, Desiree. Ladies and gentlemen, answer me. Has the nation ever had such a lovely hostage? <laughs> Last. This matter I was working on earlier tonight is an order to Marshal de Vaux. It instructs him to march across Sweden to cover the left flank of our approach to Russia. Technically, that puts us at war with Sweden, and Her Royal Highness is my hostage. But I offer her my protection. <laughs> the Emperor's first act in the new year was to disregard the neutrality of another country. No. 
My last act in the old year. The church bells will ring with our victories. Before next New Year's Eve, I will sleep in Moscow. <laughs> Allow me, Your Royal Highness. I am General Kunankor, the Emperor's aide. No one in Paris knows that we have returned. We have ridden for many days and nights. Did you obtain that dressing gown in Sweden? No, it's from Paris. They're becoming. Marie, bring some brandy, please. No. No. You seem surprised to see me. Of course. And yet we're old friends, as I remember. Why should you be surprised at my visit? The late hour and the fact that you come unshaven. Forgive me, I seem to have forgotten about it in the last few days. May I ask why? No, no, you may not ask anything. Colin Corr, I should like to be alone with Her Royal Highness, if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. Your Royal Highness. I was about to ask why I am honored with this unexpected call. This call is no honor. I'm here on a mission. I have come from the steppes of Russia where my soldiers lie buried. The ones that still live are snow blind and they whimper and cry like children who do not understand what has happened to them. I have come from a land where men crawl under their dead comrades to keep warm. How can I send a shawl? I'm knitting a shawl for my nephew. Help me to get it to him. He needs it there. I have the number of his regiment. He will be easy to find. Your Majesty has couriers. He needs it. The shawl, this warm shawl I'm knitting. <laughs> A shawl to Russia. <laughs> for my hundred thousand dead. For my frozen grenadiers. A grey warm shawl for my grand army. <laughs> Go to bed, dearest.
Do you know who met with the Tsar before the Battle of Moscow? Do you know who advised him to burn the city so that my troops could not winter there? Do you know who suggested that I be taken prisoner during my retreat? Yes, I'm sure I know. My husband. Yes, your husband. Your husband, I want you to write him a letter. A personal letter, immediately. Perhaps if it comes from you, he might remember that he once was a Frenchman. I wanted to tell him that I have returned to Paris to prepare the final defeat of my enemies. Tell him that I offer him an alliance. And tell him that I would like Marshal Bernadotte to march at my side once again. And that is why you came to see me? Yes. And because I was... cold and tired and alone. Jean-Baptiste has answered the letter, and his answer is, he will march against Napoleon, not with him. Napoleon is defeated, and Jean has led one of the armies which fought him. The Allied troops are about to enter Paris. Oh, I hope Jean is with them. Russian Grand Duchess. Uh -huh. To strengthen the alliance between Russia and Sweden. Don't believe everything you read. Oh, if you think it would be wise, I would make only one condition. What's that? That I become your mistress. Too expensive. You simply have to remain my wife. Killed many Frenchmen on my way back to this bridge. At Leipzig, he sent my old regiments against me. Men I'd fought with as comrades. I reviewed them as prisoners of war. Don't torture yourself, darling. Now I go to face him, the last link in the chain. I pray. Jean, I want to come back. I never knew how lonely it could be to be alone until you left. Soon? Very soon. Now that we're rid of him. Thank you for choosing the island of Elbow. Remind me of my birthplace. The vegetation there is not too unlike that of Corsica. Well, 
Well, gentlemen, I'm ready for exile. Bernadotte. I have nothing in common with those other friends of yours. But you, a man who rose from the ranks. A soldier whose loyalty I've always cherished. Your deployment against me at Leipzig was brilliant. The tactics for genius. That is true. I learned them from you. French standards in the dirt. Tell me, Bernadotte, did you enjoy your triumph? How did you feel? In despair. In despair. Well, that at least is becoming to the most illustrious traitor France has ever known. History will determine which of us was the traitor. But if it affords you any satisfaction, you may know that when I leave your sight, I leave France. I will never be back. There is the difference. I will be back. He has escaped from Elba. There will be more war. How will I ever get back to Sweden? There has been a battle at Waterloo. And now Napoleon is barricaded at Malmaison and wants to fight to the death at the gates of Paris. There will be more killing, more blood. Napoleon must be stopped. John said it long ago. Someone must stop him somewhere. His own battalions protect him at Malmaison. Their bayonets are drawn. If we try to seize him, more men will die. Unless he is turned over to the Allied command by tonight, we cannot save Paris from destruction. He is stubborn and bitter, madame. But you, you have known him well. He has always seemed to, perhaps, a woman. Why, Desiree. I'm sorry if I startled you. Well, I'm not accustomed to having visitors here recently. But then you and I always met rather unexpectedly. Won't you please sit down? You 
You know, I once asked you to walk in this garden with me, and you refused. Yes. I was afraid of you. Well, you had reason to be. You know, Desiree, that hat doesn't suit you at all. Not at all. May I remove it? I am here for a purpose. I'm sure you are. Do you remember when we first met? That was the night you told me you knew your destiny. That was the first night I kissed you. You were thinking about my dowry, General. <laughs> no, not entirely. Truly not entirely. I wonder what my destiny would have been had I married you. The same, I think. Perhaps. But the history of empires often depends on such trifles. So does the history of people. Yes. Well, you're here on a mission. I bring you a message from the French government. You I... were sent to me as a courier? Do they think that I'll be swayed by sentiment? What a shabby device. I wanted to come. Oh, yes, indeed. You always enjoyed playing the role of the courageous lady. I am not at all courageous. Just the opposite. But when there's a great deal at stake, I can make the effort. I am to tell you that the Allies will not accept the surrender of Paris unless you leave France. If you do not give yourself up today, the city will be destroyed. There is nothing new in that message. It's been sent before, and you may take it back with the same answer. I can still mobilize 100,000. And how many of them will die? How many more men will lie in their graves because of you? How many more French mothers will hate you? How many more children will grow up cursing your name because they have no fathers? I've had to shed blood, but only where it was indicated. What indicates it to you now? Your destiny? I judge my conduct by my conscience, and my conscience is not troubled. Day by day, I too gave my life for my country. And yet, my mother did not wish me to become emperor. She did not even attend my coronation. I made Carolyn's husband a marshal, and he joined my enemies. I made Bernadotte a marshal, and he fought me in the field. I made war in order to secure peace. Not for a year, but for a dozen centuries. I dreamed of the United States of Europe. Frenchmen, Italians, German, Poles, Russians, and all the others. One law, one coinage, one people. Was that so rash a dream? No. Only the way you dreamed it. And now? I'm to let myself be taken to that God-forsaken rock in the ocean, St. Helena. I return from Elba, but I will never return from St. Helena. Is this what you ask? It is what France asks.
It is customary to hand over one sword to the officer taking one prisoner. Bernadotte will explain it to you. At this moment, I surrender to the Allies. Please don't hold it like an umbrella. Goodbye, Napoleone. No one has called me that for a very long time. Tell me, Desiree, when did you begin to fall out of love with me? I don't know. Somewhere along the way. Strange our paths, yours and mine in Bernadotte's. You will go to Sweden and become a queen. The two most outstanding men of our time have been in love with you. And you know real beauty, but you have a way with you. Go and tell my brothers to prepare for my departure. I want to be alone for a while. Desiree, our engagement. It wasn't only the dowry. Go along now before I repent.